What is going on guys? Welcome back. So uh, today I would like to continue with the same topic that we talked uh, last time and that is the formations and cylinders and how to avoid that. And I had a lot of questions and actually a lot of messages about uh, why don't you just use this or why don't you just use that. So we're going to talk about it now and I'm just I hope that I can answer some of those questions. So uh, let's start right here. And here we have a situation where we used, let's say this cylinder, we want to have a small extrusion on the inside. But the problem is we have this uh, straight shading and we always gonna struggle to see and actually how to deal with the shading and make it a bit more smoother. So one of the questions was, why don't you just use shrink wrapping or conform to fix this type of deformation? And I'm gonna show you right now. So uh, we have here a cylinder which has double or more sides than the cylinder right here. And what we are going to try to do, we're going to try to project this cylinder and to this one and hopefully try and resolve this issue right here. So in Maya you can use conform and shrink wrap, in Cinema 4D you can use shrink wrap, and I'm not sure for Blender, I'm pretty sure you have shrink wrap as well, and it's gonna work exactly the same way. Uh, so uh, let's try and use conform in this case. What I'm gonna do, so for conform to work, we need to select the object that's going to be our, let's say, base projection. So. We are trying to take the geometry from this object, currently this one, and its geometry project onto this one right here. So let's select it. Let's go right here and make it live. Then select the object we want to project and go to Mesh, Conform. And there we are. So now we have this projection and you can see that they are fitting perfectly except this area right here. So everything matches except this area right here. And if we check the mesh, we can see that in theory it should work, but it's not because this shading is still there and you can see that it's still sticking out. So why is it not working and why it's sticking out? Simply because this area cannot calculate itself more in more divisions than it has. In this case, we have only this one division trying to even itself out on, let me just now disable this. It's trying to even itself out on these two divisions. And that's simply, it's not working because when we remove this one edge, it becomes much flatter than everything else simply because it doesn't have enough divisions. So basically just imagine this edge right here. So I'm going to demonstrate that even more. So let's go shift right click, duplicate face, local translate. Just try to imagine that this face is trying to wrap around itself this object. If it, if it doesn't have enough subdivision, simply it won't be able to get this curve because here we have one, two, three edges and we have here only two. So one edge in the middle is missing to have a proper, uh, let's say a proper uh, form. And another thing is the highlight direction, but we're gonna see that in the second example. So here you have a bit more subdivisions and in theory with more subdivisions, we should get better results. So let's add uh, this one as a live object and let's select this one. Let's go to mesh conform or even you can go to the form shrink wrap. Actually uh, to shrink wrap to work, we need to disable this. First select uh, the object we want to project and then uh, the targeted object, the form, shrink wrap, and there we go. So same issues. We still see that everything matches perfectly except this area right here. And if we see now how this performs, the shading is still there. So what's now the problem? Because now we should have more divisions and in theory, it should uh, transfer itself really good to the object on the back, but it doesn't because we have flow of the edge edges that go in this direction. And you'll notice now also when I select these edges right here, that this is also going to be the flow of the highlight. So check this. So this here, this here, this here. There's your highlight. Simply because the edges go in that direction, they're going to give that highlight. So it's really going to be the matter of with how much can you live with. 
so let's check this example, which is more or less similar, but actually we are interested in this one. And let me just compare one, two things. So these are the same divisions. So let's increase divisions here as well. So this now has a ton of divisions. And let's try to do the same thing. So I'm going to make this live. I have this in a hotkey. So let's go here to mesh conform. And if we now select this one, now it should be a bit better because now we have more subdivisions. But the thing is, again, the same flow, the same edge flow gives us that highlight. So in that case, let me let now show you the third example. Since we have that much subdivisions, we actually do not need to do this redirection to make this corner sharper. Because if we notice here, this corner and this corner, they're not so much different on this level of subdivision. So we really do not need this redirection because this by default cylinder uh, edges are holding just fine. And we can see that since this is a default cylinder, same thing as we saw in the previous video, we don't have any sort of deformation here. So it's really not necessary to use any, uh, let's say shrink wrapping or uh, conform operations. So whenever you're using default cylinder highlights, so for example, nothing here is broken, highlights again still goes in this direction and you're still going to see minor pinching here, but at least it's going to be contained within this area. So just something to keep in mind there. Uh, let's now take a look actually into the examples where shrink wrapping and conform operations can be very, very useful. All right, so let's say here, uh, this is just a small demo project. And let's say that you're working on a robotic bust and you came pretty far. And by accident, let's say you did a mistake where you pushed this or you had, let's say, camera-based selection off and this happened on the back and you went too far and like, all right, so this is new and how should I fix this now? So maybe then you try and let's say select these two edges, um, maybe try to do manually, maybe you try to do it like this, let's say connect it back like this, but you will still see some sort of shading problems on the surface. So in this uh, type of situations, uh, shrink wrapping and conform operations can be very, very useful. So let me show you how. Here I have a um, layer called new save and old save basically that just means that uh, we you are going to need two objects for this and it's that's why it's also good practice to keep saves whatever uh, whatever you do so let's say i load my old save which is this it has much less uh, subdivisions but it's also very very smooth so if i check it here with the blend it's very very smooth doesn't have any uh, problems uh, so what i'm going to do here i'm going to use this as my base projection and then I will just reproject my new version onto that old one to fix uh, the slumpiness. So let's say here we have our old save, which I just used and I added a bunch more subdivisions to make it even smoother. And then I have, let's say, this is going to be our lumpy mesh, which has something like this. Now, in order for this to work, I mean, it's going to work the best if we just contain it as a flat surface and remove everything like this that has an extrusion. So this is an extrusion on the inside. Everything that we don't need, we're going to minimize. So I'm going to remove all of these parts that have any, let's say, uh, sense of depth. And then later you can just bring uh, these edges back. So let's do shift, right click, and then detach components. And then this is going to be uh, the mesh we're trying to reproject. So let's also extract faces so we can just easily select it. So we need it only like this, nothing else. This is going to be just enough. So it's not going to work as good with all of these, uh, I would say peripherals. It's going to work the best if it's only flat surface like that. All right, so we can also use just a slight scale to see the difference between the two. I also color coded it so we can see the difference. This is now our clean mesh, which we are going to use as a, let's say, projection base. So uh, either if you're using shrink wrap, it's going to be the same. In this case, we can make it live again. I'm going to show you both ways and why I prefer actually a conform for this type of fixes. So this is live. Um, so this is now live selection. 
let's bring our lumpy mesh, which is this one, and simply go to mesh and conform. And now you'll see that it will snap. And also what we can do is just uh, remove this clean one so you can see what actually happens here. So let's go to mesh, conform, and you will see that it will snap back. The only issue that still might be here is that this edge is not super aligned. So uh, with conform operation, you, uh, we still do have that live surface in the background, which will allow us to move the objects along that surface that it's on the back. So it gives you simply a bit more freedom to organize the mesh how it was before. So now you just need to bring all these points back and you have a smooth surface. And then the only thing you need to do is shift right click and combine all these objects back. Uh, I'm not sure we have now a lot of edges here around. You can maybe remove these supports wherever you can. So let's say here we can remove these supports. And this one is also a bit too close. And then simply bring uh, these edges back. Let me see here. This might do. And so what we're trying to do is select all the points and just merge everything back. And merge vertices, just increase threshold a bit until all points snap more or less and then you have your clean surface back and that now simply you can bring back all of these supports that you're missing and yeah that is that is all uh, the same thing would work with shrink wrap so let me just maybe undo a couple of steps back uh, so let's say again we have a similar situation here and then we're going to select uh, i'm actually going to increase this a bit more and just delete this for now. So uh, now what we need to do in order for shrink wrapping to work, first we need to select, maybe I can also remove this. I will just delete it. All right, so first we need to select the object with our deformations, and then we need to select the object uh, that has a clean surface. And then you can go to uh, deform, shrink wrap, and there we go. So the difference between the two is going to be that with the shrink wrap, if there is any extra uh, let's say edges on the surface that are not aligned you are probably going to fix that and then do shrink wrapping one more time so that is this is uh, the area where this can uh, come very very useful uh, let me show you one more example all right so uh, let's say that we want to wrap the cylinder around uh, this chest piece and uh, what we can also do is let's say bring it this close and do boolean operation and then just fix uh, the booleans but also we can use shrink wrapping in this case as well so uh, what we could do is let's go to face mode i'm going to select all of these faces hit uh, scale tool shift to a uh, hole for the extrude and i just want to delete this part and what i'm trying to do is select all of this area so this is something that we are trying to project and like we said, it's working best if we have a clear, let's say clean surface that doesn't have any depth to it. So what we're going to shift, right click and detach, basically extract the surface into a separate object. So now this is a standalone object that we can actually project there. And maybe we can put it a bit closer. And then this area we can again make live and then use this part and go to mesh conform and you will notice that it will snap perfectly to that shape uh, same thing it's going to be if you use conform if you use uh, let me just show you that as well if you shrink wrapping you will first select your surface you want to project and then the second one and simply shrink wrap you're going to get the same uh, result but again with conform you are going to get more freedom since this is going to be live surface, so you can still adjust the object. So uh, let's do that. So mesh, conform, and remove live surface. And let me now see, since this is perfectly aligned, now I'm going to see where that object is. You can also hide it, select it, and unhide it. And just move slightly back. And there we go. And now it's only the matter of connecting these two together. And it's really now the issue, do you want to connect these points there or we can delete everything here, select these two, shift right click 
combine, select the edges, shift right click and bridge. And now we have an object that it's perfectly fitting. So let me just select this area. So we have an object that it's perfectly fitting right there. And then what we can do is just bevel this a bit. And there you go. And I can also add material. And now it fits very, very cool. All right, so I think that this is it for this video and I hope it answers some questions. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.